Hello everyone. Welcome to the Emmy Lion. My name is Courtney. I have been suffering from chronic illness for many years. Um, for the past seven years, I have been about 95% housebound. And of that time, about 75% of that time has been stuck in a recliner or in my bed. Um, extremely weak. Um, debilitating fatigue. And, of course, when you're mostly bed-bound and chair-bound, uh, you continue to get even weaker. So it's been a really tough cycle. Um, for those of you that didn't see my first video, um, I have MECFS, which stands for Myalgic Encephalomyelitis Chronic Fatigue Syndrome. Um, I also have fibromyalgia. I have inflammatory bowel disease and I was diagnosed with chronic Lyme disease in 2018. Um, I talk mostly about MECFS because that's been the most difficult thing. The symptoms have been the worst. They've been the most difficult to manage and it has seemed to be resistant to absolutely everything I've ever tried or thrown at it. So, um, you'll mostly hear me talk about that, but I will discuss my other chronic illnesses when it's relevant. Um, but mostly, you know, they all work together. There's not just one single thing at play here. It's, um, a combination of immune dysfunction, autonomic nervous system dysfunction, rampant inflammation, um, and yeah, I mentioned immune dysfunction, so there's a lot of autoimmune issues going on. So anyway, the inflammatory bowel disease is probably the most serious thing I'm dealing with, but the, hello, but the MECFS has been the most devastating thing that I'm dealing with. So anyway, in this video, I wanted to talk a little bit about the symptoms that I have lived with for the last seven years. And I wanna talk about um, how the carnivore way of eating has, um, has improved them. So we'll kind of talk about before and after uh, starting carnivore. I've been on carnivore 70 plus days. I think today's like 73 uh, or day 74 or something around, something around there. So anyway, I sat down last night and I made a list of all the symptoms that I've been dealing with, and it's front and back page of, uh, of symptoms, which was really, well, it's, it's not been fun. So anyway, I'll just kind of, I'll just kind of read those off and discuss them a little bit. Real quick though, I had a commenter, um, Lydia S, this is for you. Uh, you asked if I could please just talk about what I eat in a day. And I'll do it real quick because it's super simple. I eat um, egg yolks and I eat beef. Um, that's basically it. I've been doing mostly ribeyes and you, you don't have to, that's an expensive way to do it. You don't have to do it that way. Um, I'm doing it because that's where I feel the best. And right now we're able to do it. Um, I have a lot of healing to do. And so I, I'm just trying to really do that for like the first 90 days. And then I'll probably try to do different things. But right now I'm, I'm being a little um, hardcore, I guess, uh, about what I'm eating. So I do ribeyes. I do six egg yolks. And that's definitely every day. Um, occasionally I add in a can of sardines. And I just try to like stand over the sink and choke those down and not look at them or smell them. Uh, some people really love them. I don't hate them, but I don't love them. I, I can get them down. So that's pretty much all I'm doing right now. Uh, occasionally I let myself have some chicken thighs. I love them uh, and it kind of breaks up the monotony of what I eat, but I don't feel as good uh, if I eat them routinely. So I kind of let myself have them as a treat. Um, yeah, so... I hope that answers your questions, Lydia. But 
if you need more information on that, there's a lot of carnivore content out there. And I would probably steer you to Bella, the steak and butter gal. She talks a lot about what she eats. She talks a lot about um, like ways to do carnivore on a budget. And so she's just got a lot of ideas and I won't, um, I just won't go into all that today. That'll be a separate video. But if you're just itching to know more about what to eat and, and some of your options, um, I would start there first because a lot of people have already covered that ground. But thank you, Lydia. I appreciate your comment. I appreciate you asking that. Oh, and also, um, I hit 100 subscribers and I'm really humbled by that. I put my first video out last Sunday and, um, and today is uh exactly a week later so that was unexpected and i'm i'm really happy about that i'm i'm happy to have you guys here okay enough rambling half of you probably already clicked off by now but all right these are the symptoms that i really lived with and struggled with um and they're really in no order i just kind of wrote them down as i thought about them brain fog memory loss um the inability to do more than one thing at a time. I completely lost my ability to multitask or hold one more than like one thought in my head at a time. <laughs> That's a really big problem. When you're a nurse, you've got to be able to multitask. You've got to be able to hold a bunch of things in your head at one time. Memory loss is definitely not a good thing. Um, these cognitive symptoms continued to get worse. And um, <laughs> you just, you can't, you just can't imagine. I know people say brain fog and you probably think, uh, that doesn't sound that bad. It's awful. It's awful. Um, it steals your, it just steals your mind. It, it steals your ability to focus, think, concentrate. It, it feels like it steals your intelligence. Um, I would get disoriented. You know, I would say, okay, I'm going to go do my curbside pickup today for groceries. And I would head out in the direction that I've traveled you know, hundreds or thousands of times, and suddenly I'd feel completely disoriented, like, I don't know how to get there. I can't remember how to get to these very common routine places that I've been. Um, joint pain, muscle pain, neuropathic pain, um, the feeling of bees just stinging me randomly all over my body, strange feelings in my hands and feet, random skin rashes, I think maybe, I don't really know. I think maybe the skin rashes were from food intolerances, but I never really could nail anything down. And a lot of times they would appear after I got out of the shower and um, and sometimes they'd clear up as quick as they came on and other times they'd linger for a while. So there wasn't a pattern to the skin rashes that I could ever really nail down, which was incredibly frustrating. Um, I would be completely wiped out by the shower. Um, and I think a lot of that is due to severe heat intolerance. That's another, that's been a terrible symptom, the heat intolerance. And I don't mean I can't tolerate 90 degrees. I mean, if it's like 70 degrees, I'm too warm. Okay. Like that's, and that's insane. So I've had to keep my house like an ice box, my poor husband, uh, but he has, he's dealt with it. Bless his heart. Um, so I think what would happen in the shower is that, you know, you've got the heat, um, standing in one place, uh, has been really hard. Um, my blood pressure would drop and I think that was, you know, from the heat, your vessels dilate. Um, and then I would just get so sick and so weak in the shower. Uh, I oftentimes needed help getting out. Um, I'd have to kind of sit on the side of the tub before I could finish, you know, drying off and doing the whole routine. And a lot of times, um, you know, I'd have to shuffle my way over to my chair and, um, you know, recline back and put my legs up and take a couple of hours just to recover from, from taking a shower. Ugh, you guys, <laughs> uh, it's been so, it's been so miserable. Um, which led to an inability to shower daily. And, um, you know, I really struggled with that. I'm someone who 
likes to be tidy. I like my house to be tidy. I like everything in its place. Um, and I feel that way about my body as well. And it doesn't help that I have a naturally oily uh, constitution, um, which is good. I think it keeps your skin looking young, but it can make you feel kind of gross. And my hair gets oily real fast. And so <clears throat> a couple days after you shower, you're already looking, you know, like you haven't showered in <laughs> days. It's not good for the self-esteem. Um, you know, I, I stayed clean. I, you know, kind of, you know, you can do like a sink bath and towel off and, you know, and you do the best you can, but it's not the same as taking a shower. And so I lost my ability to, to shower every day. And depending on how bad things were, um, you know, <laughs> anyway, um, I had a constant feeling of heaviness in my legs. My legs felt like concrete, um, and it made me painfully aware of every step that I took. Um, extreme debilitating fatigue, that that's ME-CFS. Um, and no, fatigue is not the same thing as being tired. So those of you who are kind of like, yeah, yeah, I get, you know, I'm really tired too. I get real tired after I get off work. You know, no, it's not the same thing. Um, fatigue is devastating. It's a whole different, it's a whole different category. And um, with chronic fatigue, in my first video, I said it was the most ironic thing I've ever dealt with. You're so fatigued, all you want to do is rest, and you and you just can't. Um, it's like it's like your body just won't let you, and and then you can't sleep. You have insomnia, so you just all you want is just rest, and you never really can get it. And if you do luck up and get some rest or get some sleep. Um, you don't wake up feeling rested or restored. You feel like you've been fighting some kind of battle all night long and, and so you never feel like you get any ground. It's incredibly frustrating and it's utterly absurd. <laughs> MECFS is utterly absurd. Um, let's see. Extremely limited energy. Yeah, that goes along with the fatigue. Um, but you know, part of the reason for that is that with MECFS, we don't metabolize energy correctly. Um, there is mitochondrial dysfunction. And what seems to be happening is that um, we go from an aerobic respiration to an anaerobic respiration. Um, some of you can think back on the Krebs cycle and kind of know what I'm talking about. Some of you are probably like, what? That's okay. Um, that's the way your body produces energy. And so um, there, there's a problem with our with our pathway, and it seems to shunt into a different pathway, and I think it's called the itaconate pathway. Forgive me if I uh, mis misspoke or mispronounced that. But anyway, um, it, it puts you in, a, in an aer anaerobic form of metabolism, which produces a lot of um, oxidative or reactive oxygen species, which um, creates a lot of oxidative stress, which drives inflammation. It also leads to a lot of lactic acid buildup, um, which I think accounts for a lot of the pain that we feel and probably the heaviness in our legs, um, difficulty holding your arms up to drive. And it even that lactic acid even ends up in our brain and that's one place lactic acid should never be. So that's probably driving a lot of the, the cognitive impairments. So um, that's just one of the problems with MECFS. There are more and that's a different video. I am, somebody asked me if I would do a video um, just explaining what MECFS is and I will, I will. That's probably the next video. Um, Insomnia, I mentioned that. So that's not uncommon with MECFS. It's not uncommon with fibromyalgia. It's not uncommon with Lyme disease. It's not uncommon with a lot of these uh, quote unquote invisible illnesses. Um, and the way my doctor explained it is that people like me, we get fragmented sleep, which is kind of like catnapping. We never get into a restorative uh, healing sleep. So, you know, that just adds insult to injury. Um, 
and makes it really hard for you to heal or get any kind of traction. And it exacerbates every other symptom that you're dealing with. So that's super fun as well. Um, racing heart. Yeah. Um, my heart, my heart would just race and, um, even just sitting and resting, I could feel my heart just like ticking away. Um, my resting heart rate would be in the hundreds easily. And my guess is that probably low blood pressure. Also, they say with ME-CFS, we have less circulating uh, volume. That will also increase your heart rate because your heart, you know, it'll increase its rate trying to overcompensate for that. Um, let's see. Oh, to that, um, I had a lot of stabbing chest pain. Really super painful. It takes your breath away and, and, and you'd have a hard time catching your breath. In fact, one time I actually did go to the emergency room over it. Um, but that happened so often, I eventually just kind of learned to, to live with it. Like, oh, this is just one of the many weird symptoms that happen to me on a regular basis. And, you know, you just kind of like clutch your chest and, and bend over and, you know, wait for it to pass. And thankfully, it usually didn't stick around too long, um, maybe five minutes or so, which is long enough when you are, when you feel like you're being stabbed in the chest. But um, I guess it could be worse. So sometimes it wasn't five minutes. Sometimes it was like 30 seconds. Sometimes it was a minute, but it could be up to like five minutes. Um, I dealt with a lot of anxiety, even when there was really nothing to be anxious about. It's like, um, it would come out of nowhere and my body would get really hot. My skin would flush. My heart rate would, you know, start running away. And this would happen in the middle of the night too. If I was lucky enough to finally get into some sleep, my body would just like jolt me awake. And, um, and then I would just have these runs of anxiety and, and I never could put my finger on what I was anxious about. I mean, every once in a while, you know, we've all got stuff going on, but I'd lay there and I could logically in my head be like, there's nothing to be anxious about. Like, just calm down, calm down. There's, it's fine. Um, but my body was just like, my body just was off doing its own thing. And I, and I never could, I never could talk it down. Um, anyway, depression. Yeah. You know, you, you're sleep deprived, you hurt everywhere. You're stuck in your house. You quit your, had to quit your job and lose your social life. Um, you lost your ability to make an income. Um, you have so many absurd symptoms that no one takes you seriously. Yeah. You're going to get depressed, you know? Um, I don't know what else to say about that. Depression is kind of a duh kind of thing, um, when you have chronic illness. So, um, extreme light sensitivity. I can't stand to turn the lights on. Um, that's getting a lot better, thank thankfully, because that's a real miserable one. But, um, for the past seven years, we've never turned an overhead light on. You know, I've got little lamps and if it is an overhead light we've got it on a dimmer and I've got little LED taper candles and so we've just done a lot of sort of ambient light um but yeah no no bright light oh my gosh um sensitivity with your skin sometimes you just can't stand the way your feet your clothes even feel on your skin um sound sensitivity and even smells um I, I kind of got to the point just within the last two years, it suddenly smells were unbearable. Um, and they just, you know, just make you sick. And it'd be, you know, really simple stuff or stuff that hasn't bothered you in the past. Or, you know, if my husband sprayed a chemical in the house, if he was trying to be helpful and just clean something, um, I get a whiff. And most of the stuff I use is really clean, um, you know, like essential oil-based kind of cleaners. Um, and even those started to become really bothersome to me. So that's been really tricky as well. And I think, um, all those sensitivities with the senses, uh, I, I think that's a result of 
inflammation in your nervous system, right? Everything is just firing uh, out of control. Um, ice pick headaches. Yeah, those are super fun. They um, are named appropriately. It does feel like an ice pick to your head and thankfully those don't last long either, but uh, they're so intense and they come on so fast that you can't help but kind of like grab your head. You go, ah, um, and people are like, oh, what's wrong? And then it's, you know, and then it's gone in like 30 seconds. So, <laughs> but anyway, ice pick headaches. Um, multiple food intolerances. Yeah, so that seemed to come out of nowhere. It probably didn't, but that's how it, that's how it seemed. Um, I had to, early on, I gave up dairy, grains, gluten, soy, um, uh, da, 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 da. I'm sorry. I'm not having a great brain day today. Everything basically except for meat and vegetables um, were completely off the table for me. Oh, yeah, no nuts, uh, sugar. I started, um, sugar just made all of my symptoms worse. It made the pain worse. It made the insomnia worse. It made my anxiety worse. And it didn't have to be a lot of sugar. Um, just a, a bite of something. So I learned pretty early on to avoid that. And we know that sugar, you know, flames and fuels inflammation. So it actually makes perfect sense. So I gave that up a long time ago. Um, let's see. Post-exertional malaise. I've talked a little bit about that in my previous videos. That is the hallmark symptom of ME-CFS. If you're wondering, do I have ME-CFS? Do I have... Um, fibro, do I have rheumatoid arthritis, MS, da, 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 because a lot of these things are, are very, very similar, and they can take years and years and years to get a diagnosis. Um, the hallmark symptom of ME-CFS that sets it apart from anything else, because none of these other illnesses have this symptom, it's called post-exertional malaise, and that is the payback you get from any activity that you do. It can be physical activity, it can be mental activity. If you sit down and, you know, you're um, trying to do some work. Um, for me, I tried to do some writing for a while and I would end up with PEM from that. It was not as extreme as PEM from physical activity, but, um, but PEM all the same. Now PEM can last, um, it can last a day or two. It can last months. So I'll do a video on that. Um, I'll, I'll do a video on PEM. It's such an important symptom and it's it's probably the thing that is the most devastating that holds us back. It actually makes you pretty phobic on exerting yourself at all. You, you get to a point, because PEM is so miserable, you're like, oh my gosh, if I do that, am I gonna end up getting PEM from it? So, um, and the answer to that for me was generally, yes, uh, the smallest things. But anyway, that's a different video. Uh, let's see, I talked about the difficulty driving. Um, yeah, I talked about all that. Uh, I dealt with air hunger. Um, there were just times I felt like I couldn't catch my breath. I wouldn't go as far as to say that it was shortness of breath, but it was just like, like you felt like you needed to breathe a little extra or something. It's hard to, it's kind of hard to explain. You know, you know, you're, you're breathing. Okay. Um, just felt like you needed more. Uh, I don't know. Um, pretty much no libido. Um, I talked about the extreme heat intolerance. And so that's a real booger for the shower. It's also a real booger when you live in the South because <laughs> it's hot here, folks. Um, it's hot here more often than it's not. I feel like, you know, we get a couple months of winter and most of the time feels like summer and then you have a few months that are kind of mild fall is really really mild but but it's hot here it's humid um and so i've been really stuck inside uh for you know most of the spring and and all of the summer and in a good portion of the fall too it really doesn't cool off here in east tennessee um until right around halloween and it'll finally cool off around Halloween, and then um, it'll warm back up. Not crazy, but you know it'll warm back up through um, a good bit of November. 
So <laughs> in case you were wondering what the weather patterns are like here in East Tennessee, now you know, I'm sorry, that was kind of a, um, that was kind of a rant. Um, I talked about low blood pressure, increased heart rate. Yeah. And then, um, you know, there's been a lot of GI symptoms, stomach pain, frequent bathroom visits, um, blood and, and mucus. And I would just have this ripping, tearing pain in my side. And no one could make heads or tails of that. But that's literally what it felt like, um, a ripping, tearing pain. And it would kind of like pull me down. And um, I felt like if I stood straight up, my you know, my insides were just going to rip apart. And so that was a really, that was a really bizarre, <laughs> that was really bizarre. But, and I've been dealing with that for, well, for several years also, and everything looked okay. And then this past August, um, my colonoscopy was not good. And I got diagnosed with inflammatory bowel disease. They're not really sure if it's ulcerative colitis or Crohn's yet. And I think they're leaning more towards ulcerative colitis, but either way, no good. So those are the symptoms that I've dealt with for years and years. And um, they've some earlier than this past seven years, um, but they've been super extreme over the past seven years. And when you go to the doctor and you have a list of symptoms like this, you sound like a crazy person, okay? I'm not saying you are, because I'm not a crazy person, but they look at you like you're a crazy person. I've been treated that way. Um, I've heard I've heard doctors and nurses like giggle at, like I've heard them pull my chart out of the door and then giggle, like I've heard that. So um, I know, and look, if I didn't have it, I might think it's a little much too. It's like, really, you got all these, like all these symptoms? You sound like a hypochondriac. And then, you know, they would, um, the doctor would come in and he'd be like, well, you know, you have a stressful job and blah, blah, blah. You know, it's probably just stress. And why don't you take these antidepressants? And no, heck no, I'm not taking those. I took those, I tried those once and they, <laughs> no way. Ter terrible side effects. No way, I'm not taking that. And I'm not telling you not to take it, okay? That's a personal thing. You might need them. Um... I didn't need them. They never made me feel any better. In fact, they always made me feel worse. And um, if you're dealing with chronic illness, being depressed is pretty normal. It's not like your life is hunky dory and you just, you know, can't figure out why you're why you feel so bad. Um, chronic illness is rough. And it takes everything away from you. So um, I just had to try to learn to find coping mechanisms for that. And I had to find outlets and, you know, ways to combat that. I'm sorry, my little indoor outdoor cat is pawing at the door. So if you can hear that, I'm really sorry. <laughs> He's fine. It's, it's like 60 degrees outside. He's okay. Um, okay. So anyway, at 70 plus days into the carnivore way of eating, most of these symptoms are gone. Now this is a two, this is a front and back page full of symptoms. Most of them are either completely gone or they are, um, they've improved to such a level that they don't, they don't really give me any kind of um, problems or distress. It's nothing that really um, pulls my attention or my focus. You know what I mean? Because chronic pain, it, it pulls all your attention, you know, sometimes it's all you can think about. When you're miserable, sometimes it's all you can think about. So, um, no, I've been liberated from most of this stuff. Today, I am dealing with a little bit of brain fog and I'm not feeling great today. So, um, I think I've been super active. Like for a person with MECFS who has not been able to be active at all in seven years, the past few weeks, I've been really active. In fact, most days I've stayed on my feet from the time I've gotten out of bed until probably sometime around supper time. And that's been impossible and completely unheard of for me. And I've been able to, you know, get out and run an errand. And normally 
that would have cost me a week. It's like, okay, I went into town and picked up groceries, came back and put them away. It would take me about a week to recover from that, just in time to do it again, you know? Um, oh, I've got to take my dog or cat to the vet. Um, and then I'd spend days trying to recover from that. So I haven't had to do that. I've, I've been able to do like multiple things back to back. Um, and that's just been unheard of. So that feels completely liberating. And I'm so, so thankful for that. But I mentioned, and I think my previous video that I know the MECFS, I know it's not gone. Um, so I just haven't really known what my limitations are. I, I said that I felt like I got a longer leash. Um, I think I've, I think I've kind of met my current limitation. I didn't really know where that was. I think I've, I think I do now. So, but I'll say this, if I didn't improve any more past this point, um, and I feel sure that I will, uh, I'm pretty positive that I will continue to improve and, um, hopefully put this thing in remission for good. But let's say that didn't happen. Let's say I didn't progress any, any more past this point. Um, my quality of life has been so greatly improved guys. Like I feel like I've been let out of prison. <laughs> Maybe I'm on parole, <laughs> you know, I'm not, I'm not quite free, but, but I'm not locked up either. Um, yeah, it's great. I'm, I'm able to spend a lot of time on my feet. I'm able to get out and about a little bit. I, I said on a previous video that I got to get out with a neighbor and actually do a little bit of shopping. It wasn't anything crazy. You know, we went over to Home Goods and I think we were only out for a couple of hours and we didn't even walk the whole store. We just checked out the seasonal stuff, you know, but, but that's stuff I've really struggled with in the past. And I kind of got to do something like that maybe twice a year. And, um, and then I would spend you know, weeks recovering from doing something like that. Just a simple, just a simple, like outing to, to a store, you know? Um, so it's been so nice. It's been so nice not to have to count every step that I'm making. It's been so nice not to have to break down my day. Like, oh, okay, well, I'd like to take a shower today so I can either have a shower or do X. I can't do both. I can either make myself food or take a shower. I can't do both. And those have been the choices that I've had to make in the past. And my husband, um, until recently, was required to do a lot of traveling and he would be gone a week or two weeks at a time. And I would be here um, by myself and there'd be days when I'd get out of bed, feed my animals, and I'd have to go back and rest. And then it would be like the accomplishment of the day to get myself fed, you know? So it was really rough. It's been, it's been really, really rough. Um, there really are no words, and maybe that's another video. This one's getting to be kind of lengthy. Um, what am I still dealing with? Uh, well... I'm still dealing with brain fog every once in a while. Um, today is one of those days. I really had a hard time getting started on this video. I had to stop it and restart, I think about 15 times. And I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm really struggling to, to find words and, and kind of speak um, smoothly <laughs> on this video. So yeah. Um, what else am I dealing with? Sleep is still a little bit of an issue. I still have to take something to sleep. Um, I'm going to try to maybe start tapering off of that when I reach like the 90 day mark. Um, last night I experienced the heaviness in my legs, the feelings of like the, the concrete feeling and being painfully aware of every step that I was taking. That started in last night. So I think I've just probably overdone it a little bit and met my limit for where I'm at right now. But, you know, that's, that's probably mostly it. I mean, the anxiety is gone. In fact, it's really, it's really funny. There are times I actually feel like 
euphoric, perfectly calm, which is odd because I don't know if you're paying attention, but the world out there is super crazy and it doesn't seem like it's getting <laughs> any better anytime soon. Um, anyway, I won't get into that. But there are a hundred million things to be anxious about, right? Um, but that's pretty well gone. The depression is gone. I feel very even keel. My mood is, is pretty even, Stephen, uh, regardless of what's going on. Uh, so I'm really thankful for that. Really, really thankful for that because, you know, mood, um, mood impacts everything. And so, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll say this. Um, if, if you're someone like me, if you've been dealing with chronic illness for a really long time, I would suggest getting a counselor. I didn't feel like I needed, you know, like a therapist or anything. So I just, I found a, I found a Christian counselor because the spiritual aspect of this has been really important for my mental health and healing. So you do what you, you know, you do what works for you, but um, I had a really hard time sorting out all the emotions and just everything. <sighs> Chronic illness, it's, it's not bad enough that it's beating you up physically. It starts be beating you up mentally too. You start questioning your self-worth and your value as a human and, and you feel like a burden to everybody. And, um, and I, I couldn't help that. I, I couldn't help but have those thoughts. Like, what am I, what am I good for? And, um, and those, you know, those thoughts are not accurate, but I had to kind of talk my, I had to talk all that through and I needed to, I needed help sort of coming to grips that I was a sick person. Like I, for the first few years, I just thought I'm, I'm a person who's, who's sick right now, but I'm going to figure it out. And I started right away trying to crack the code, researching everything I could. And that's really hard to do with brain fog, by the way. Super, super hard to do. I learned everything I could about nutrition. I learned everything I could about phytochemistry. And I even became an herbalist in the midst of all this, which was extremely difficult because your brain works like one day a week. <laughs> um, and I just felt sure I was going to crack the code through that stuff. I tried, you know, every supplement that I could think of. I tried every herb that I could think of. I've tried, I've tried, guys, I've tried everything. Carnivore is the only thing that's moved the needle. And I've said that before. I don't mean to repeat myself, but carnivore is the only thing that has moved the needle in any significant direction that has given me any type of freedom that has, um, has any, like promise of giving me my life back. And I do feel like I am slowly, but steadily getting my life back. I've spent boatloads of money on supplements and functional doctors and uh, IV infusions and oh my gosh, this and that and this and that. I started making my own um, herbal preparations, tinctures and uh, all that kind of stuff. And, um, and then I'd put myself into PEM, like trying to stand and do that kind of stuff. So that ended up being a little bit counterproductive. I don't regret it though. The information was great. And I believe there is a lot of help in that, in that area. But, um, tons of money. And it turns out beef and eggs, beef and eggs are giving me my life back. So yeah, it's that simple. It's that simple. Beef and eggs. Okay? <laughs> all the money, all the time, all the frustration, all the humiliation from um, healthcare uh, providers that that make you feel like a, a wackadoo and tell you that it's in your head. It's all been so unnecessary. It's been a wonderful learning experience, you know? Like sometimes we just have to go through these things and we learn from them and then we take what we've learned and we put it out there to help other people and that's what I'm doing. That's my only goal here with this channel is to try to reach people, um, anybody, but 
especially people like me who um, felt like, you know, there's very little understanding of this condition. There's no compassion for it. There's um, just now, really within the last few years, is there even any significant research being done on it? And I'm thankful for that because there is some good research being done and hallelujah for that. Um, but, you know, there are still doctors out there that haven't even heard of MECFS or they don't believe in it. I had a doctor actually tell me, that's not a diagnosis that I will ever make. Okay. Uh, you know, but I want to reach you. You're not alone. You're not crazy. And if you are like me and you've tried everything under the sun and you felt like, okay, I guess I've tried everything that I know to do. Um, and this is just my life and I've got to resign myself to it. I've just got to accept that my life is this bed. My life is this chair and my life is just the walls of this house. Well, don't resign yourself to that just yet, okay? I don't know if this will work for you. I have a pretty good feeling that it will. Um, but, you know, we're all we're all different. So, um, guys, I just, I just wanted to share all that with you. I know it's been a long video, and um, I'm not super sharp today. So, um, you know, I'm sorry if it's been painful to watch. But you have to appreciate the immense amount of symptoms that I was dealing with. And I'm not saying that these symptoms were two years ago or three years ago. I've only been on carnivore for 73 or four days, less than 90 days. That's how fast things are turning around from beef and eggs, okay? And like, that sounds crazy too. And, and I'm still trying to wrap my head around it. It's so simple. Keep it simple, stupid, right? We should call it the KISS diet because it is, it's so simple. Anyway, I'm going to wrap it up for today. I've rambled on enough. Um, I appreciate you being here more than you know. I'm really humbled by all this. I really didn't expect anyone to watch these videos and the fact that people are watching them. Um, it's warming my heart and it makes me so optimistic that I'm going to get this message out there. So I'm just going to ask that you help me get this message out there. Help me reach the invisibly ill community. They're a really forgotten group of people um, that I know from personal experience feel incredibly hopeless and desperate. Um, so in order to help me get the message out, please, please, please like the video and please subscribe. Um, I think that's kind of the key to the YouTube al algorithm, algorithm, the YouTube algorithm. So um, the more you guys like and subscribe, the more people I can reach. So anyway, thank you so much for hanging in here with me today. And I just I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll catch you next time.